Well, somebody dropped this thing off at my house yesterday afternoon. Let's see if we can't get it running and driving. It's an M151A2, not to be mistaken for an M151 or an M151A1. Both of those are its predecessor. Um, this one is made by Ford, but uh, I believe they're also made by AM General and Kaiser. It has 141.5 cubic inch motor. It made 71 horsepower and a whopping 128 feet inch pounds of torque. Top speed of 65 mile an hour. Whoa, Nelly, is about all I can tell you. I do not know what year it is. Um, these were made from 70 to 78, I believe right. It's got a couple of tags with lots and lots of numbers. Uh, may have to get online on one of these forums and give them all that information, see if they can't figure out what year it is. Well, the fellow that owns this, he told me that he bought it whilst it was in storage and it's been stored for about 20 years. I've been wanting to open this chest ever since I saw it. I ain't sure if there's anything in it. Well, let's just go ahead and open it, see what's in it. Oh, I might go to the other side to get that latch. There we go. All right, y'all ready to see what's in it? Ta-da! <laughs> ain't nothing. Well, got a canteen. And I don't know the official name for this, but it sort of looks like cookware. Uh, does this open? Yeah, there we go. That comes off. Does this fit? Yeah, it fits right there like that. We got us a fork. Oh, look at here, this is a, well get off of there. Hang on, let me get this off here. This looks like a frying pan. I guess that's what it is. Huh, that's pretty neat. Yes, sir. Let me put this back together real quick. All right, let's put this back in here. We'll shut that. Um, that's pretty neat. What would this be considered a foot locker? I don't know you military guys Y'all have to educate me on this stuff here uh, Here's one of those tags. I was telling you about It gives uh, what well, gives all kind of Informations on it. You can see the M151A2. It's a quarter ton. It's called a mutt military utility tactical truck I believe that's what that stands for If I'm wrong, well y'all y'all let me know Here's the other tag. It's got to, let me get in here closer. It's got an NSN, I don't know what that means. Manufactured by Ford Motor Company. Contract number, I, I think that's you know, basically what that says. It's the contract that Ford had. Manufacturer serial number, uh, and then here's the manuals to work on it. Here it is, date of delivery, and there's nothing there. No inspection. Um, I've come to find out just, you know, in a few minutes I've fooled with this thing that military vehicles, well, they're just a wee bit different. Well, take this headlight switch, for instance. I've, I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's got all kind of levers and markings and, well, let's just, I'll just tell you about it because I had to do a little research on it to know what it was. Um, basically what it is, this lever here, well, it says panel BRT, which is bright and then dim off and park basically what that is it's your your panel lights gauge lights right over there you can be bright you can be dim you can turn them off or you can turn just regular old parking lights on right there well this one up here says bo drive bo marker off stoplight and ser drive ser i'm assuming just service drive i don't know but bo marker bo drive that is blackout lights basically what that's for if you're in a convoy in a you know a war zone fighting a war, well, you don't want to turn your regular lights on. That's just like saying, hey, here we are. Come shoot us. Well, they have what's called blackout lights, and it's the really, really dim light that you can barely see. It's, you know, in, in, when, if you're in a convoy, you can see the guy in front of you so you don't run over him. Uh, basically, is what that's for. Uh, and this lever here, it says unlock. Well, that is to keep you from turning the regular headlights on. Once again, you're in a war zone, you turn them on, that's like a beacon. Hey, 
Come shoot a squirrel over here. Keeps you from getting blown to smithereenies, basically. Uh, but anyway, this lever will only move to marker. Then you have to hit the unlock to go to, to the blackout drive, like that. Then you move back over here to off. This here is, is hanging, it don't go back down. But to go to regular, to go to stop lights, it won't go. You have to lift up on the unlock. Go to stoplight and you can go to uh, the just regular old headlight and taillights right there. But yeah, that's, it's to keep you from getting blown up. It's pretty interesting. Uh, this switch here is, is just off and on. I'm assuming it's just a master switch. And I believe this right here is going to be your starter button. No, wait a minute. That may be, yeah, I believe that's, it looks like an old dimmer, headlight dimmer switch, but there's one of them down there. So I'm assuming this is starter button because there's no key over here what we have is well there's your throttle i'll tell you about that in a minute you know we just pull it out uh, it has to do with the fording valve i believe fording valve what it does well i tell you what let's just go out there on the hood and uh well i'll just show you what it does here is the fording valve right here here's the cable that goes to that handle and from what i understand basically what this does on this model this is a PCV valve. It basically shuts that off and allows crankcase pressure to build up in the motor. That way water can't get in. You know, if you've got pressure inside here, well, water ain't gonna be able to creep in. That's basically all that's for. Well, let me show you this. I forgot to show you on this tag in here about the, the fording. Right here, it says uh, shallow fording depth, 21 inches. So this Jeep is certified or whatever to go up to 21 inches of water, you know, without anything bad happening. Uh, some of the other ones, well, let me tell you this. Last night I was on the YouTubes looking up videos on this Jeep and come across two guys. I think they were in Vietnam. They had one of these Jeeps. Well, they just took her off out in the middle of a river and eventually all you could see was their heads sticking up. The reason they can do that is the intake here, it will have a snorkel that comes up here. You know, it'll be way up here. That way water can't get in. The exhaust, same way. It'll have a snorkel that comes way up here where water can't get back into the motor that way. And from what I understand, this throttle uh, cable right here, you pull that out. It's sort of like a cruise control whilst you're in the water and you ain't got to worry about, uh, you know, where it working the gas pedal. But yeah, that's, I mean, it's pretty wild to see how some of this stuff is made uh, and the purpose that it serves. Yep, it's, it's pretty neat. Now, since these things can go underwater, basically, uh, which, you know, this one ain't rated to go completely under, but, you know, everything has to be waterproof, just like these sparking plug wires. Well, I mean, look at that right there. We'll, we'll take them off here in a little while. But I've never seen nothing like that, and... When I first saw this distributor, I was like, what the devil, why is it made like this? Well, the coal, this is your coal right here. It's inside here, so it can be waterproof. It's it's just pretty amazing the way they built these things. Now the blackout lights I was talking about earlier, well, here is your blackout parking light. And I'm assuming this is a blackout headlight. The headlight is really, really dim, and you, I mean, just barely see the ground, basically. And these, well, you can see it's got two marks in there. And from what I read, if you see one, it means you're so far from them. If you see both of them, well, it means you're fixing to crash into them, so you better watch out. Basically, I think that's what that means. Uh, let me walk you around back here and uh, show you what they look like in the back regular tail light and then there's your uh blackout lights right there i'll tell you something else blows my mind when i saw it <laughs> well firstly you're sitting right on top of the gas tank this is the gas tank let me take this off right here and show you yes sir there's the gas tank right there but look at what a feel neck i can stick my dad blame hand in there <laughs> i don't really understand the purpose of that but and I tell you what, it makes it easy to clean out. Yes, sir, Reed. Well, I reckon I'm done showing you around the thing. Uh, it's just it's just interesting to me to see how all this stuff is made. But I reckon, let's just see if we can get the thing running. The uh, 
gas pedal, it's stuck to the floorboard. So I think what we'll do first thing, let's just go ahead, pull the cob roster off there to park, give it a good cleaning, see what it looks like. Well, here's something I just realized that I ain't real sure what it is, but it looks like a horn. Does it have a horn button? I didn't even pay no attention to it. Well, yes, sir, it sure does. Well, we'll have to get that horn working, yes, sir, Ree. All righty, before I pull the cob roster off, let's check some fluids real quick. Do it has any wattals? No, sir, it has no wattals at all. So I'll have to add some antifreeze there. What about Earl's? Does it have any Earl's? Yes, sir, and it's completely full. It looks brand spankingly new, too. Won't have to put no Earl's in it. Well, I, I guess we ought to see if it's stuck. Um, well, it probably ain't. Let's just see. No, sir. It's not stuck. That's good. All right, well, let me get this car roster off. It's got all kind of lines on it. I don't really understand. This one here, this one right here, is coming from the fuel pump over here, going into the car roster. But then you got one coming off of that same, looks like the you know, needle valve assembly going into what I'm assuming going back to the gas tank. I don't I don't understand that. I don't know what that's for. And then you got this line. All right, that's going to the distributor. That's probably vacuum advance. Then you got this here going to the forwarding valve. And well, I guess that's pretty much it. Anyway, let me get all this mess took apart. Get that car roster off there. All righty, what do I need to get this off of here? I need some wrenches. I need some school drivers. Looks like I'm gonna need some vice grips because that right there <laughs> has been rounded off. Let's get the hoos off first. Get the hoos off, man. Get the hoos off of the carburetor. roster. That hose is pretty doggone stiff. Let me get my universal wrench, also known as a croissant wrench. Let's see if a chanty locks will get that off. Oh yeah, he broke loose. All right, let me get this throttle loose. Just like that right there. Now all I like is two nuts and uh, I think it'll come off. What size are you, little buddy? these in here on the level. This is interesting. I can't get to it. Well, there went that. Never see it again. Well, there went that too. Never see it again. That's going to be a pain to get that bottom nut back on. Yes, sir, it sure is. All right, I got the nut. Where did the locking washer go to? It must have fell on the ground. Let me see if I can find it. I found it, I found it. All right, we got it off. Let's take her apart and see what, we'll see what we're working with. All right, let's get this float bowl off this carburetory device, see what we're working with. All right, will it come off? Well, yes, sir. I didn't even tear the gasket. That's pretty good. Well, the main thing is it ain't, it ain't real dirty. So it'd probably be okay. I'm gonna Spray carb cleaner everywhere and fine. I'm not taking that off though, cause that's liable to be a diaphragm and gasket and I don't want to tear it up. But I will spray carb cleaner in every orifice and hole that I can find. Well, best I can tell everything is free and clear. I don't even think we needed to take the thing apart. It probably would have ran just like it was. Anyway, let me uh, finish cleaning this bowl out. And we'll put it back on. Uh-oh. Run, row, I dropped it. See what that gasket looks a little rough. I think we'll hit that with some RT and V. All right, let's get this carburetory device back on here. See if we can't get this thing to run. Yeah, here comes the fun part, trying to get this bottom nut started. Look at there. That wasn't hard at all. Alright, we got the carb roster on now. I need to get all these here lines on. Then there's something on the fuel tank that we have to address. 
and I'll show you that here in a minute. You know what I've done? <laughs> I forgot to put the uh, return spring bracket on the bottom. So I get to take that bottom nut back off. All right, let's put this on this time. I really enjoy doing stuff twice, though. It's, well, it's, it's, you learn twice as much if you do it twice. Yes, sir, Ray? That throttle mechanism doesn't feel right to me. So I think let's, uh, let's do some investigating with that because it just, well, it's sticking really bad. Well, it's as simple as the pedal assembly sticking right here on the pivot point. I mean, it's really, really sticking. So what I'm going to do is go get my curl oil and we're going to soak that thing down real good because that right there, well, <laughs> that will make a throttle hang open and uh, I don't, well, I don't want to experience that. Kaplow, kaplow, kaplow. Take that, Mr. Acceleratory Petal. I hope that frees it up because if it don't, well, we won't be able to drive this thing because that's just, well, that's terrible. Well, whilst we wait on that to free up, uh, remember how I said we had an issue with the gasoline tank? Well, there's a plug on the bottom of it. It makes it very convenient to steal gas, but uh, uh, that plug is gone. Well, when we was rolling it off a trailer out here yesterday, we stopped it right out there for a minute. Well, there was some liquid underneath right there where the gas tank is. It was not gasoline's. So it's got some other liquid in it that probably ain't combustible. So somehow I gotta get that cleaned out before we can get some gas in it. And I gotta find a plug for that hole too. I don't know if y'all can see any of that or not. I got my fleece leaked shine down in there a minute ago and there's some liquid, but there's there's a lot of little trash down in there too. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see any of that or not. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the shop vac. We're gonna vacuum it out best we can. I'm gonna put a plug in the bottom of it and we're gonna fill her up with some gasoline and see if we can get this thing to run. Well, I ain't real sure if I did any good. I, I'm gonna go get my camera, my blade. Let's stick it down in there and see what we see. Oh yeah. According to the whole camera, there's still a little trash in it, but um, I think we're gonna risk it for the biscuit. I'm gonna put that plug in the bottom of it. We're gonna put some gasolines in it and we're gonna see if she'll fire up. Yes, sir. All right, let me get this plug in real quick. It's just a quarter inch pipe plug. All right, let me put some gasolines in it. And we'll throw the batteries in it. And let us see what happens. I wonder what that goes to laying in the floorboard. Drink up, little buddy. Drink up. There's one battery. There's another battery. This is a 24 volt system, by the way, in case y'all didn't know that. I don't believe that's tight enough. Let me tighten this one up real quick. And then I reckon we'll see if the start tar works. And then we'll see if it'll fire up. Alrighty, the batteries are hooked up. I'm assuming that's a master switch. Yeah, we got a gauge or two moving over here. Uh, what are them gauges? That one there, I think that's fuel. That one, I believe, is charging. That's temperature, oh, water temperature, and the oil pressures. Yep, so that is the master switch right there. Now, I'm assuming this is the start tar button, but it ain't doing nothing. Um, well, you know, we got this button down here, but I, I figured that'd be the headlight dimmer switch. No, sir, y'all hear that? That is, in fact, the start tar. It ain't, it ain't, uh, don't sound real strong. Um, I'll tell you what, now that we know the starter works, let's go out here and let's just see if we're getting spark before we go any further. All right, let's get this sparking plug out. Well, maybe not. What size are you, little buddy? Hmm, I think it may be already loose. Yes, sir, it's already loose. Let me see if I can find the starter and 
get my little gun hooked up maybe. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to that. Where is the solenoid at? Interesting, I don't see one. Well, there is no solenoid. That switch underneath the dash there, the foot switch, well, it's the whole thing. So, I, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to see if we're getting any sparky spark if I'm over yonder. So, this is interesting. All right, I got the sparky plug way over here where I can see it. It's uh, grounding out on that vacuum line right there. So if I can reach a starter in here, maybe we can see it sparky spark. Oh yeah, it's sparking. I don't think it's picking up on camera, but she is a sparking. So uh, let's put that spark plug back in. Might shoot a little something something in the carburetor. Let's see if she'll fire off. I'm gonna see if I can't fill the carburetor up through the filter right here. Then I'll have to hook that line up and that return line up. And uh, we'll just see what happens. All right, I got the lines hooked up. I've hooked my choke cable back up. Uh, I'm gonna give her a little grank of gasoline right here. A little bit to grow on. I'm gonna close the choke. We're gonna give her the old try. Fire in the hole. <laughs> starter ain't real enthusiastic about turning over <laughs> let me give her another shot let me pull some sparking plugs we might put some gasoline directly down in them all right, let me give her a little drink. There's your little bit. There's your little bit. There's your little bit. I ain't sure I hit that hole over there. Maybe I did. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that was an excessive amount of gasoline. So we're probably gonna go from no fuel to flooding. All right, let's give her another try. <laughs> Give her some extremely flammable stuff. See if she likes that. Let me open that throttle. Well, she don't want to start. That starter is really, really dragging. So we may need some new batteries. I don't know how old them batteries are. You know, they're freshly charged. So let me go get some batteries from somewhere. Well, I found me another battery. It's a little run down, but I know it's a good battery. So I swapped it out. I got me another charger to put on that over there. I'm gonna let them charge for a little bit. I'm gonna go in the house and eat me a sandwich cause I'm hungry and I'm wasting away to nothing. So I'll come back in a little bit and we'll we'll give it another try. Well, it got dark on me outside, so I moved to Jeep Alipa here in the garage. It's supposed to rain tomorrow too. So I figured I'd bring her on in here. I think what I'm gonna do, let's just do a compression check real quick, see what we're working with, and then we'll go from there. Alrighty, let's try cylinder numero one. <laughs> What do we have? We have, oh, 70 PS of eyes. That's not very good at all. Cylinder number two. We have approximately 80-ish pounds. That's not very goodly at all either. All right, here is cylinder number three. What do we have? Oh, it's pretty good. It's what? About 105 or so, yeah. So we got, 
We got one good cylinder anyway. Well, I can't get number four spark plug out. It's, well, let me show you the spark plug. I mean, that's a goofy looking thing right there. You gotta have a really deep well socket to get that. I don't have it. So we're just going to assume that it's bad. Um, let's put some Earl's in these two right here and we'll do the compression test again and see what we get. I already got me some transmission fluids here. I'm gonna squirt a little bit down in these two right here. Um, if the compression comes up, that tells us, you know, we got a ring issue. You know, they're probably just sort of seized to the piston and they pop out. This transmission fluid will help them do that. If it don't go up, well, we may have valve issues. All right, let's check it again. I like to see approximately 100 pounds. If you got anything less than that, well, you got you got some issues, and it's it's gonna be tough to make it run till you get that pressure up. Well, let's check it and see what it does. All right, here is cylinder one. <laughs> Well, the gauge fell, but we now have about 115 or so. Not bad. That tells us that it is rings. So let's check the other one. Cylinder number two. Well, holy crap, holy. That went to 160, 170-ish. 165 maybe. Wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, what did that tell us? That tells us that we got some ring issues, probably just from sitting up for so long. Uh, you know, they're sort of seized with the piston. A couple of heat cycles, and they'll probably pop right back out, and then it'll be like a brand spankingly new one. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the sparking plugs back in. Let's give her a shot of gasoline over in the car roster. Try it one more time. If it acts like it don't want to start, well, we'll, uh, we'll put some more transmission fluid in and let it soak overnight. All right, let me give her a little drink of gasoline. Well, she just don't want to start right now. I am checking compression in cylinder one, and you can see it's dropped back down to all oh, 90 ish somewhere in there so i'm gonna put some transmission fluid in these two cylinders here we're gonna let that sit overnight i think i'm gonna fool with the electrical a little bit because not one single light on this jeep works well i got the light switch out i got it tore apart and looking at the print power comes in on one wire and goes through one switch before it goes through anything else i don't know which switch that is but looking at it well everything's pretty disgusting so what I'm going to do is give me some sanding paper, clean all these contacts up here, all of them in here, put it back together, hook it up, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have lights. Well, I got all the connections cleaned up. I got some dielectric grease on it. I uh, took all this apart and cleaned and greased it, all the shafts. You know, they were kind of sticky. Um, it uh, seems to be operating pretty good now. But the bad thing is it was TIG welded in four spots around the case. Um, so I don't have a TIG welder, so I got to find somebody that can weld that back together. But for now, I'm going to try to hose clamp it together because it's got spring tension on it. Um, anyway, I'm going to hose clamp it together and we're going to hook it up and well, let's just see if it works. Well, the switch is working. I'll show you all that in a minute. I'm just trying to get all the lights working. Um, let's see this parking light turn signal works. I got both headlights on high beam. Well, this one's out on low beam. That turn signal and the parking light don't work, but the the blackout marker, that side, that's the only one that works. None of the blackouts in the back work, but both tail lights and brake lights and turn signals work in the back. Well, I took this lens off here just to look at this blackout marker. <laughs> I think I think we got a wee bit of rust in here, so let me clean all this out and see what we got going on. Maybe I can get these blackout markers to work. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I tore this in a part two in the back, hoping I'd get the blackout uh, markers to work. Well, that's that's electronical stuff, and I'm sure it's just wasted. It's kind of rusty in there like it held water. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to get them to work. I got the lenses back on them two lights. 
I just want to show you all the headlights. Kaplow! All right, watch the dim. Oh, yeah. Ain't got but one that works on the low beam. Both work on high beam. This, y'all probably can't see it. That right there that I originally thought was starter, it's the uh, it's the high, high low beam switch. And well, let me turn the lights off and turn that marker on and I'll show you it. All right, there is the blackout marker. And then tell you, <laughs> you can't hardly see it. No, sir. Pretty doggone dim. I believe what I read on the backs is, you know, there was two. There was a top row and a bottom row. Well, I think one of them, if you saw it, you were like 60 meters away or something like that. Well, if you saw that other one, well, <laughs> you better be slowing down because you fixed it to hit them. There is tail lights and hazards. Brake lights work. I didn't check them too. So all of the important lights work except for one, uh, one uh, parking light on the front. Well, at least I got the switch working. I got to count for something. I got to find somebody that can TIG it back up those four spots so I don't fly apart. Um, I put Kroll oil in the cylinders earlier. Well, I just put some transmission fluid in there too. Uh, I'm going to let them sit overnight. I'm going in the house. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Well, upon further investigation, I'm pretty sure. Remember how I told you this was made before? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, the sticker on the valve cover says AM General, which I know it, they could have changed the motor, could have changed the valve cover, but let me show you this right here. You know, this plate with all the numbers on it? Well, guess what? It's screwed on there and right there. Pretty sure it's supposed to be riveted on. Yes, sir. I don't think that belongs on this vehicle. Plus, according to the fellas online on one of the uh, forums, see this little thing right here? Well, that's a drain. You know, if the floorboard gets full of water, well, it drains out right there in that little hole. Uh, they call that a side drain. And they wanted to know if it was a side drain. And I was like, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Well, they told me. And it is, in fact, a side drain. AM General uh, had the side drain. Ford did not. Ford had a drain back here in the back somewhere. So this is, in fact, an AM General M151A2. And that means... That this is a 72 to 78 Ford, if I'm not mistaken, Ford made them 70 and 71. And then AM General and Kaiser got the contracts after that. So 72 to 78 is what this thing is right here. And it's actually not a Jeep either. Um, if you notice, the bars are horizontal, Jeeps are vertical. This is not an actual Jeep. Well, it's the next day, and the weatherman, he lied to us. It ain't no dad blame rain out there. Anyway, this thing is soaked all night with the crow oils and the transmission fluids. So let's just jump right in and see what kind of compressions we're getting. La 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 la. Cylinder one. I see the batteries ain't no better. Neither is the compression. Sitting on about 80. That ain't, that ain't gonna cut it. Cylinder two. <laughs> That appears to be around 85-ish or so. We have not improved very much. Well, that ain't a whole lot of improvement there. Um, that's liable to be why this thing was parked. It's just wore out, so they stuck it in storage. Um, tell you what we're gonna do. Let's put just a little bit of Earl's in them two cylinders, and then we'll put some gasolines in there with it, and um, let's just put the plugs back in it, see what it does. The acceleratory pedal, well, it's completely freed up now. I'm telling you, that Kroll oil is some awesome stuff that's got me wondering about them rings. If it didn't pop them loose, well, we may be in for a fight. Let's, uh, let's see if it'll fire up. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get her started just like this right here. She ain't even attempting to start. Well, I pulled the distributor cap off because I want to know which way that rotor turned so I know which way to advance the retard. It turns clockwise, by the way. Well, then I got to looking how in the world do you move it? Well, fill up under here, there's a slot right there. 
and there's a bolt right there where my finger is. Well, somebody's been fooling with it, and they've got it all the way advanced. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm going to back her off just a little bit. Probably we'll try about middle way there. Let's just see what it does. Maybe that'll help it out. Oh, she's trying to fire. Oh yeah, I believe we I believe we done hit on something here. Let's back it off just a wee bit more, see what happens. I'm gonna pull this line back off and I'm gonna try to get some more gasolines in that carburetor bowl. because uh, the fuel pump, I don't believe she's ever started pumping anything yet. All right, let's give her another try. Well, she's trying to start, but it sounds like it's only hitting on about one cylinder. That's probably number three. The rest of them, you know, pretty low compression. Uh, let me pull these front two back out and uh, squirt them with some crow oil whilst my battery's charged. And then, well, we'll just keep on trucking. Well, I pulled them two front plugs out. You know, I was going to put some crow oil in it. Well, they were soaked with crow oil. So I cleaned them off, put them back in. Maybe they'll fire now. Fingers crossed. Fire in the hole. Well, let me pull them plugs out again. See what they look like. They're pretty wet again. Yeah, I got all kind of transmission fluid on the outside. Uh, let's just keep doing that, pull them out, cleaning them, trying it, because it hit pretty hard there one time. I believe she's going to run eventually. All right, let's give her another try. <laughs> Well, I believe the old thing wants to run. Um, the more I fool with the timing, the better it gets. So my battery's just about dead. I'm going to let them charge for a little while, and then we'll come back and give her the old try again. Well, the batteries, they're charged up. Fuel pump, she's pumping like a geyser. Let's give her another try. I'm back at timing off a little bit more. Quite a bit. 
try again. This is getting annoying right here. Well, she's smoking, <laughs> smoking out the tailpipe, smoking like crazy up here, burning all this stuff off this exhaust manifold. Years and years of garbage right there, it's burning off. Um, I reckon we need to put some Wata in it. I think our water pump is leaking because I got some antifreeze puddled up right there. So I'm just gonna put water in it for now, just so we don't waste no antifreeze until I find out where the leak is. But yeah, let's fill this up. I want to hear her run some more. Well, I'm pretty sure we got oil pressure. It pegged the gauge, but it stayed pegged. So that's not good, but uh, I'm pretty confident we got oil pressure at least. All right, let's see if she'll fire up again. <laughs> She runs, but <laughs> I don't know how well the camera picked it up. That motor right there, it sounds like a diesel. Uh, I couldn't hear it when I was sitting in the seat there because that hood rattling against the roll bar and it's got plexiglass up there just rattling like crazy. But when I walked around here, let me tell you, it, yeah, it ain't valve train noise either. It's down here, pistons, rods, I don't know. It sounded awful, terrible. Um, I'm afraid to start it up again. Well, let's do it and just see just see if it uh, continues that knocking and carrying on. Yes, or there's something wrong with that motor. Uh, it took it, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds maybe. She went to riding like a diesel. Well, let me show you the oil pressure gauge. You can see right there where it's pegged, but I can peck on it and it'll drop back to zero. That drop back down. 
So that tells me it's got oil pressure somewhat, you know, at least uh, for a little bit. So uh, I'll tell you what I might do. Let me rig up oil pressure gauge. I got to find one and we'll just see. Maybe it is losing oil pressure. I don't know. Well, I stole the oil pressure gauge off the run stand I built a few weeks ago. Uh, let's fire it up and uh, let's see. Let's see if we're losing oil pressure. I this is weird to me. Let's just see what it does. Sitting there purring like a kitten. Got about 40, 48 PSMIs. Do a few seconds, it'll probably start rattling. For a couple minutes now, rattle went away. Sitting there purring like a kitten. Let me shut it off and I'll tell you what I think it was. Well, I decided to fire the thing up and just let it run. I dropped the RPM on down and uh, well, I just let it run. And you know, 15 20 seconds later, here come the rattle. Well, I don't know, a minute or so later, the rattle disappeared. The RPM come up and it sat there smoothed out, and ran like a sewing machine. I don't understand that at all. Ain't got a clue. I thought, you know, it might have been the lifters were bled down. But why did they pump up and then bleed down and then pump up again? It did it several times, you know, because every time we'd start it, 15 seconds later, it'd go rattling. I don't know. I'm just glad that it's hopefully fixed itself. Um, also, I went around there and looked at temperature gauge. Temperature gauge works. And it's, it's up to operating temperature in like two or three minutes. That's, that's pretty good. I think what we're going to do, I'm going to take my oil pressure gauge back off. I'm going to start it up and uh, just going to let it run and sort of break in again, basically. Uh, the water pump, I don't see it leaking anywhere, so <laughs> maybe this is a self-healing Jeep. <laughs> Never met one before, but I guess so. Anyway, I'm going to start it up and just let it run. All right, far top and let it run. <laughs> Twenty-seven point seven voltages. I do believe she's charging. I tell you what. <laughs> This plexiglass right here, it's got to go. It's rattling like crazy. Let me get that off real quick. smoke just a little bit I would too though I've been sitting for 20 years well it appears that all the gauges work except for that oil pressure gauge you see it's pegged there's the temperature there's the charging and then there's a the fuel I think it works but I ain't real sure well I attempted to get the horn working as you can see I got the button tore apart it's Pretty rotten and rusty. Here's the center part of it there. Middle of that's gone. It did squawk and squeak just a little bit a few times. Well, then I come out here and put my metry on the horn itself. 
and well i put my hand on it let me tell you she's pretty warm pretty sure i got third degree burns now but i think it's it must be shorted on the inside so i don't reckon we're gonna get to have a horn also no by the way see that right there and that right there i figured it was some type of a blackout light but it's not a typical blackout light because they'll have a hood over them like this and then the light shines directly at the ground that way the enemy can't see them well i talked to the owner and he said those are infrared uh blackout lights um you gotta have special goggles to see them well that explains what this ir is right here on the dash with this switch well i turned it on and well this one here ain't even wired up wires just flopping this one here i thought it might work and your cell phone should pick up our light well it ain't working but anyway i thought it's pretty cool that's what they are y'all saw me i put a straight guy in the water in this thing and it is floating all five balls which means minus 40 protection it must have had straight antifreeze in it i reckon well, the old thing starts and runs pretty good now. It's sort of reminiscent of uh, Old Blue, the old international dump truck I worked on a few months ago. Remember how we had a time getting that thing running. Once we got compression up, I ain't kidding you, I can throw a battery in it now. As soon as I hit the key, that sucker fired right up. It's it's amazing how they can do. Anyway, uh, I think, well, let's just take it for a ride just around my road here. We'll go around behind the house there, come back, see how it does. Um, it may rattle this camera like crazy because it vibrates pretty bad. The only place I got to mount my camera holder is right there. Well, let's just hit the road. All right, let's get in this old beat up contraption here, get up the road. We might even try a four wheel drive out here in a little while. Well, that ain't good. Huh, what in the world? I talk good about it and it's gonna do me like this. I ain't never in my life. Well, if that ain't something, <laughs> if that ain't something to tell the captain right there. <laughs> I swapped batteries and put the old, one of the old batteries back in. Surely that's not the problem. Let me swap it back. All right, let's see what that does. Well, <laughs> I reckon he needs new battery. All right. That hood rattles like crazy. I found an idle adjustment that's all I found on this car roster I adjusted a little bit not much um, but I took it down the road a minute ago and it's a little better part throttle but now if you nail it it'll, it'll go on take off this thing has got an accelerator pump too I guess that's that little piece right down there on the side of the car roster I don't know how it operates though unless it operates off a of vacuum because you know there ain't no rod running to nothing down there 
Also, I tried to set the timing. Timing tab is behind these belts. And then the mark is supposed to be on that pulley. Well, <laughs> there ain't a mark on that pulley nowhere, so I can't set the timing. But like I said, I took it down the road. It it did pretty decent. So let's jump in this old bucket of bolts and we'll, we'll take a ride. Well, I decided to try to find that timing mark one more time on this pulley and I found it. Y'all won't ever be able to see it, but I got a little white mark right there. Let me zoom in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. You see the tip of the pointer right there by that white mark? I finally found it. The mark, it looks like a file mark on the front side of the pulley. And well, you can't hardly see it. But that mark represents six degrees before top dead center. So let me fire it up and let's just see if we can get the timing set. Let's hit the road, Jack. I don't know what caused that. All right, here we go.
Tell you what, considering the thing's been setting up for 20 years, she runs and drives pretty doggone good. We all saw it, it climbed these hills like it wasn't nothing. If I owned a farm, I wouldn't mind having that there. It's a lot of fun to drive. I will work on that carb roster a little bit more because it's got some issues, but other than that, it, it, it does pretty good. Well, I don't know about y'all, every time I see something like that, especially if I'm working on it, I always wonder, was it ever in a wartime? If so, which war was it in? Or <laughs> Was it beaten and abused by a bunch of privates on a military base somewhere? I always wonder that. Also, I would like to take this moment and say thank you very much to all veterans, past, present, and future for doing what you do and defending our freedoms here in this country. Y'all are awesome. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.